So in India, students generally have a very false perception that since I was not able to do in my previous class, I would not able to succeed in my upcoming classes. Scored around 58 percentage in my class 12th, and that too just 25 marks in mathematics. That gave me motivation that uh, I should let let the things go which are, which are happened in my past, and I should focus on what's upcoming. Your kid premium plan doesn't just limit towards counseling services they also help you in um, managing or getting loans and they kind of will help you in managing finance and housing also they kind of help me very much in terms of visa services getting into universities is like impressing up i would say trust So I'm Shravan, I'm from a tiny village near Porbandar and as of now I'm currently in my final semester completing my bachelor's in aerospace engineering from Chandigarh University. So I kind of had an interest in business analytics and data science so I applied to a couple of universities in the US and I have received fairly good admits like from Carnegie Mellon University, uh, UC San Diego, New York University. Washington University and a lot more. So I have, as of now, finalized uh, New York University. I'm gonna visit there to pursue my master's in data science this fall 24. So in India, students generally have a very false perception that since I was not able to do in my previous class, I would not able to succeed in my upcoming classes. But that's not like that. Let me share one of my stories like it's very close to my heart during my high school i was not a great student like not even average i was like very below average student i just scored scored around 58 percentage in my class 12th and that too just 25 marks in mathematics uh, i am grateful to my state board who gave me extra eight marks as gracing marks so that i could move to my undergrad so I was not like this before my class 12th. I was a fairly good student during my, I would say, senior secondary school. But uh, since I, I had a huge drop, it may be because of COVID or family reasons due to during COVID. So I was not able to keep up my pace during my high school. So when I entered my undergrad, I kind of faced a lot of demotivation that if you don't score above 60%, even mass recruiting companies won't hire you. If you want to pursue your master's at IIMs or IITs, since you don't have that 60% cutoff, you won't be able to get admits in this prestigious universities or any companies, be it private or government. So I was kind of very much demotivated now that now what should I do? I, I kind of messed up my in my class 12. So that gave me motivation that uh, I should let let the things go which are, which are happened in my past and I should focus on what's upcoming. So I started focusing very much seriously in my undergrad studies. I was a department rank three student. I am right now, I guess, uh, rank to two in my department. So yeah, I was nothing at a point. Then I became a department rank two student. And even I, I fairly topped my engineering mathematics classes. During my high school, I had grace marks in my mathematics course. But in college, I was ranked first in my engineering mathematics courses. So I also started building my profile during my undergrad. I wrote three research papers and that two are published in reputed journals like in IEEE and ACM. I got fairly good internships. So the first thing is I didn't fall or ran into the red race. I didn't pursue, I, I don't want to pursue data science because it's in a trend or something like that. It's just that aerospace engineering is kind of an interdisciplinary branch in which we study a lot of analytical courses. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, in aerospace, we, we kind of have to launch satellites into the space today and we have to predict after how many days or how many months this satellite is going to reach the des designated location or a planet or moon. So we were introduced uh, this kind of analytical and predictive methods. So that's what uh, made me interested in this field of analytics and AI. And also aerospace engineering is a very much uh, mathematical and physics oriented course. So 
it highly correlates with what we study in data science because data science is also for people who have an analytical and mathematical mindset and I, I, I also don't wanted to limit myself to a particular field that is aerospace I wanted to be more of a generalized person like I wanted to explore this uh, I wanted to execute my data science techniques into various industries like FMCG, finance, uh, healthcare, and that's what made me realize I should pursue a degree in data science. I believe counseling services are very much essential and important for a student's study life journey because it's like having a teacher in a particular domain because when you start this study abroad journey, you, you kind of develop a lot of questions like how I'm gonna get into this university, how I am going to manage funding, where I am going to live. So there are going to be a lot of questions in your mind, like how, how I am going to write an SOP, LORs. So at this point of time, you need some matured advice from some experienced people. So because as a student, you would be able to get good grades, you would be able to write SOPs, you would be able to do internships, projects and everything. But you need to showcase your three to four years of hard work which you did in your undergrad studies or two to three years of work experience in whatever company you had into just one or two pages in a form of SOP. So you need some expert guidance that how are you gonna like organize everything into just two pages. So before enrolling into any course or subscription or any service I kind of dig down about that market or industry or the players a lot and when it came to enrolling into a counseling service I kind of explored 10 to 12 counseling services. I attended uh, free webinars, uh, free counseling sessions of a lot of companies but I came down to Yoket. It was a perfect choice for me. Uh, the first reason why I chose Yoket was its dashboard. Like, Yoket's dashboard is one of the best in this counseling industries because on that dashboard you can able to access admits of, pe of people who would be having a similar profile to you. So you can check their profiles and get to know what kind of universities they are able to get in, what kind of universities they were not able to get in. And you can also check like if you are having a certain target universities, you can see like what kind of people have gotten admits into these universities. Also there is a facility of creating uh, groups within universities and within universities there are courses so you can also create groups within universities courses so it was kind of very much I would say pleasant experience that I was able to interact with people on your pets dashboard not just with counselors but uh, future prospective students uh, uh, students who already got in students who are in the process of getting in so yeah, it was a kind of a, it's kind of a fun platform and I would say, and also Yoket premium plan doesn't just limit towards counseling services. They also help you in uh, managing or getting loans and they kind of will help you in managing finance and housing. Also, they kind of help me very much in terms of visa services. So I think that makes Yoket a good choice. So the first admit I received was, I guess, in February. So it was from Washington University and that too with $25,000 scholarship. So it was a pretty much very shocking moment for me because I never ever imagined that I would be able to get into this prestigious universities. Like I couldn't even believe for a day or two that this email belongs to me. Even in a joking way, my mom told to ask universities whether they handed over this email to a right person or not. So yeah, it was pretty much very surprising for me. I believe in India, students and even working professionals underestimate themselves a lot, especially when it comes to study abroad journey. They think that because I have X GPA, I have X amount of work X or I'm from uh, X universities, I won't be able to make it to a top university or to their desired university. Because they always think like, if I want to get into NYU or Carnegie Mellon or Harvard, I need to be from an IIT, I need to 
uh, have GPA like above nine. So it's not like that. It's a very false perception Indian students are having. So if I would share my test scores, I, I kind of had an overall 8.22, but in my last two semester, I had around 7.5. And yet I was able to make into universities which are known for their GPA-centric admits, like NYU doesn't admit people often if they are not having GPA about that. So that's a very false perception, I would say. Uh, it's not like that. Uh, getting into universities is like impressing a, I would say, crush. You need to put a lot of efforts uh, by your own because uh, it's not like if you have nine GPA and if you are from an IIT, you will get into that universities. I have seen many of my friends who are from IITs and IITs who were not able to make into the program in which I am into, but I was able to get into even though in terms of academics, I was not as much as great as them. So yeah, it's, it's kind of how you represent yourself to that universities. So even if you have low scores and if your friend is having high score, he might not be able to get into a course which you might be able to get in. So yeah, you should never limit when it comes to study abroad. So you should always, I would say, aim high because if you will aim high and give 100% efforts to that university, it's like efforts are very important. You have to write a personalized SOP. You have to write, uh, I would say, you have to ask your professors to write a personalized LOR to get into that university. So yeah, irrespective of scores, your work experience, your undergrad university, you should just aim for top universities and I'm sure if you would be if you would stick stubborn to this goal then you would get your desired university.